Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's stop the show! You got the touch! You got the power! Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) I'm just so psyched that they said we could use that. I, it makes me happy. I that sent chills down my spine when I saw that uh, we're allowed to use it. Yeah, let's give a big shout out to the Cybertronic Spree. Thank you very much for letting us use your music. Yeah, somebody pull up the uh, what's what's their YouTube? Is it the Cybertronic Spree? The Cybertronic Spree. The Cybertronic so Spree. They, they they are all in Transformers costume from Transformer the movie, and mm-hmm. by that we mean the animated movie. Yes. Um, I didn't think there were any other movies. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> one day, one day we'll be in our thirties or older and people will start capitalizing upon our childhood. Thankfully that day hasn't come yet. Right. <laughs> Jesus. He Webb. says that with a straight face for all of yeah, like a half just, second. That's like a bucket full of irony there. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if you haven't seen them, you should go check them out. It's an amazing song. They cover all the songs from the movie and they, they just did a really great job. And Nathaniel reached out to them to ask, can we use the song? And they replied with a hearty, what was, what exactly did they say? They basically said, yeah, go for it. It was wonderful. I had a <laughs> bit of a fanboy moment. There, there was a, a Cybertronian thing at the end. Wasn't it till all are one is how they closed out their email? Till all are one. Yeah. Fuck yep. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Oh, hello. I'm Matthew. And I am Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. Hello, hello, and hello. With our powers combined, got we got the touch. <laughs> and and we and we are we have, have movies will game. So if you haven't figured out by this point, we are doing uh, Transformers the animated movie from 1986. Oh, so, my child is so, my inner child. I say child like I've ever grown up. My child <laughs> is so happy that we're doing this movie. The one true Transformers, the Transformers of power, if you will, from the era before robots transformed by exploding so this movie was your suggestion if yeah. i remember correctly yeah. you it was on our list it was matthews tell me what does this movie mean to you why, why were you so into this movie that you wanted us to talk about it? as a child who was raised basically like a wolf in the woods I, I was raised very stoic and i i can distinctly remember the first time i wept at a movie as as a child and it was this movie it was the the optimus prime death scene Six-year-old me had a six-year-old heart attack when that happened. Yeah. I, I think we all did, and, and I think that, that was... goes across our whole generation. I mean, every every one of our age group. I mean, because you're inundated with Transformers, and it was unexpected. Yeah, nobody expected yeah, to nobody see that. Nobody saw that shit coming. No. Yeah, the, this this movie from that deep moment as a child mm-hmm. has stayed with me through the 30 plus years since. <laughs> and I mean, I, I love this movie. I will always love this movie, even even at this late date. And the three of us grew up watching it. Like we just, oh, yeah. I mean, it was a, a Saturday morning staple. We all loved it. And we probably had more than, I'm guessing one of us, maybe all of us had more than one of the toys. I would say that's a fair assumption. Uh, yeah. This was the day before totes. But I, I, I would say there was a, a sizable cardboard box. Car- yeah. Yeah. With Closet filled with yeah, Transformer. G1, G2, G3. Transformer books. swag, I think now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually do have a bit laying about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the, the wonder of giant robots has never left me. I only had one Transformer, but oh. I had GoBots uh. because I grew up poor. I'm sorry. Yeah. I would have I would have let you play with my Transformers. That, well, and thank that's you. that's yeah. not a euphemism. But um no, I mean I I had most of the generation ones. I took care of my my neighbors' horses mm-hmm. for that money. I, I I worked at my other neighbors' nursery digging up, you know, ferns out of the forest and bringing them in to to gain the money to get to the Transformers. See, I didn't go that route. It was something that my parents knew that I, as a geeky little kid, really liked. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, this is what he likes. We'll just get him for him for Christmas and his birthday. So under the Christmas tree 
was almost nothing but Transformers for me. And then laser tag. Laser tag, not bad. Laser tag is a good is a good thing. I'm sorry, wasn't there a laser tag movie? Maybe I there, think wa- there, there was there was. <laughs> oh no, trust me, there was. <laughs> so I noticed a lot of big names in this movie, uh, more than you would expect from an animated. Feature. There are a lot of big names in this movie outside of just the regular cast for right. Transformers. Like uh, Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, my personal hero, doesn't even appear on the credits. Notice Frank Walker. Yeah. Mm. It's frustrating. Yeah. I feel like we've had this conversation before for some reason. I'm but, sure that we did. Yeah, fourth in a, wall, in fourth dream. wall. <laughs> <laughs> Judd Nelson of The Breakfast Club played Rodimus Prime and Hot, Hot Rod. Right. Uh, and let, I felt like he was kind of phoning it in. Yes. Yeah, I think he was time. coming off of the high of like Breakfast Club and some of the other... He was always on the outside of the, just barely touching. At my high, the, mighty fall. Yes, <laughs> I know. But he was always on the, on just on the edge of being part of the Brat Pack. Yeah. You know, the Molly Ringwald yeah. and El Milo, all those, all those guys from Breakfast Club. I mean, for God's sakes, it, it had Eric Idle in it. I know. And Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. For Galvatron. And uh, Orson Welles. Yes. Who. Elephant in the room. Who. <laughs> He passed away prior to the movie being released. Uh, no, what like was was four this his final? This was this was his finished? final. Yeah, this was his v- final Orson voice Wells work. Final. It was it was it was his last <laughs> film horrible. project for Orson Welles. He did two at the same time, I believe. This and another one called The Enchanted Journey. Yes, which was an anime. Mm-hmm. Huh. This was his, his last voice session. Was October fifth, nineteen eighty six. Five days later, he died of a heart attack. Heart attacks are always sudden, but it, 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 he knew it was coming. Everyone around him knew it was coming. It wasn't like, oh my god! Right, right. It was like, oh well. No, he yeah. was he was lean. He was in excellent health all his life. The, yes, the, there's because, certainly no tropes about Orson Welles. No, be, be, <laughs> you know, or because long jokes. Eight pounds of roast beef a day, <laughs> and and a fifth of Jack Daniels that's, keeps that's, you healthy. That's the. Uh, what do they call that now? The paleo diet? <laughs> he was a trendsetter, man. <laughs> well before his time. Well before uh, his time. Wow. I got to say, though, in, 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 in the terms of how this is a podcast about movies that you can take into games, Unicron mm-hmm. is an unstoppable juggernaut of a planet. And I want a game where I fight something like that. Just something where, where normally it's, it's, not, it's not a villain with a backstory. It's not a tortured soul. It's an elemental force of nature that you have to fight for survival. So and you I love that part of this movie. Rewatching this as an adult, this is a an hour and twenty six minute commercial. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for toys. It's a toy commercial. That's all. Well, it is. Transformers, GI Joe, He Man, mm-hmm. Shira is in there. Yeah, uh, Voltron. Those those are all created to sell toys. The oh, comics yeah. and the show were throwaway, done that, cheap as cheaply as possible to sell. Rather expensive for the time toys. That concept, from yeah. what I understand, was illegal before a certain point in the 80s. When it became legal again... Yeah, I've never heard about that. It became I. legal again for companies to make cartoons for the purpose of selling toys. Now, that strikes me as weird because you think about like uh, the 50 shows where they'd feature heavily Red Rider BB guns. And then, you know, in the, the commercial break is mm-hmm. be your own cowboy, Red Rider, you know, I mean. Or the little orphan Annie with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the yeah. decoder ring. Yeah. I think the difference was that those things were obvious adverts. And that this was a little bit more subtle. In something, whereas this was clearly a, hey, kids, here's a story that you can watch. You know, go buy all the toys. Oh, that's adorable. Back when there was some ethics in how we marketed things to ourselves or some controversy about it. Now it's just flashing lights and buy, buy, buy. Essentially, yeah. Cheat commandos. Buy all our play sets and toys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. So this movie does have a lot of really good gameable components in it. Uh, mm-hmm. Specifically, many of the scenes, well, we can talk about Unicron, like that that fight inside of Unicron mm-hmm. between yeah. the sense- Galvatron and Hot, Hot Rod. Rod. That was a great scene that yeah. we could easily play out. But this movie kind of flows in those scenes. You've got, what, the assault on Autobot City. Yeah. Uh, that's a fantastic thing to play out. I mean, you could totally pick up some Transformers and just play it out with some rules. Um, I, I may have done that. I once think we all time. may have done that once I, or I, I had dice at a young age. I'm twice. just saying. So did I. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think the three of us all had dice at a very young age. Yeah. I, I should, don't know if that shows, but. I would be very interested in us having like a special episode where we talk about how we first got into it in our, in our memories with gaming, because I've got some really deep 
fond memories of the first okay, time. Okay, I'd, I'd be down for that. Yeah, I think dice. we could do that as some content. Yeah, yeah, we could we could turn that bonus into bonus content. Bonus yeah, yeah. But other scenes that I I could totally see playing out in other systems, which we will talk about later. The junk bots or yeah, Redgar. It's the planet. I don't remember the, the, junk, the junk planet. The, yeah, the junk planet. That was a fantastic thing. There were multiple scenes on that that you could play out with a variety of different conflicts. Yeah, the, yeah. The Transformers that were supposed to be the obvious cockroaches running around a I, devastated planet. I especially liked um, how that was a that was a, a devious DM moment as well. Oh yeah, it was. Oh, which which one? You mean the the kangaroo court? Because I've played oh. that exact scene. <laughs> I think we I'm all have. talking so many about the, uh, <laughs> the, the the junk planet where um, you have an ally if you approach it right, which mm-hmm. they eventually oh, yeah. did. Yeah. They did, yeah. But the DM will, will put something out there and a party, which traditionally kills the quest giver, can either choose right and have an ally or mm-hmm. choose wrong and fight to the death and get overwhelmed by millions of cockroaches. That that whole scene to me was a DM ploy. I'd well, say they chose right. Oh, yeah. But then they chose wrong. Yes. Immediately after choosing. I, I think we've all been DMs e- e- enough times in our lives where we will sit and plan for that whole week or two weeks before we game. And we've got something so good, so juicy to give to our players. And then within five minutes, oh, yeah. it all goes out the window. completely obliterated. I bet I know exactly what happened in that scene. Let's, if this were a game, mm-hmm. what happened was the GM was like, all right, cool. They're on this beach. They have split the party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I split the party. Now I'm going to. Totally have these guys fight some shark bots. Oh, but wait, they they use diplomacy. And they... <laughs> natural 20! Oh, damn it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, how am I going to milk this? Oh, well, uh, I'll have them use it again. Oh, natural 1! And he failed. <laughs> All right, cool. But now that the fight is over, I guess I got to pull something completely out of my butt and come up with a courtroom scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a courtroom scene. In the middle of a story about giant robots. Well, giant robots. Makes sense to, to me, right? Yeah, it makes sense to me. And whatnot. I don't know. I thought that was a good moment. And it struck me as something that both as a player, I've intentionally done because I can be a bit of a prick from time. And as a DM that I've had happen to me. Did you ever find any kind of deeper inspirations from the Transformers specifically in the stories that you told? Did it inspire your imaginations outside of buying toys? Oh, or was Transformers oh, just yeah. like, I need to buy a toy thing? I, I think for me, Transformers was, I mean, I loved the cartoon and I loved the, the, the movie, but I think as a kid, they were cool robots, mm-hmm. but they, it wasn't anything that I think as a writer inspired me. And I don't yeah. think that it inspired anything at the gaming table. No, no, no it really didn't. Well, hang on. Maybe the kind of sort of leading into the AI structure of things, because I tend to write about AI. I think it might have. Go, helped go with that direction a little bit but there's so many other things that were more of a uh, of an inspiration on that level i would say it wasn't a direct inspiration but it did reinforce some of the tropes that i had already been introduced to young matthew mm-hmm. the matrix is basically excalibur right yes i, I think and, so and only the <laughs> right the chosen one can wield it it is the MacGuffin. It does whatever the story wants it to do. Other than that, it actually but the has Matrix, no applicable use. The Matrix is an amazing film. Oh, well, he's talking about the, the Matrix, Matrix of Leaders. Oh, oh, the Matrix yeah. of Leaders. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we were diverting. For oh, no, a no, no. I, it's Which just is a, fine. Only, only the chosen one can use it. It shall lead all, us all, in our darkest moment. And <laughs> Ultra Magnus is trying a a, a good person, a yes, worthy warrior, but a he's nice not giant worthy robot. Enough. Yes, but he is not the one. No. Just as like, um, and you see say that Galahad it, couldn't pick up Excalibur and go running amok with it because he's not. And you see it when he gets gunned down on the. Oh, it's a planet. sad moment. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's not, not sad optimist, as optimist, sad, but but it's there's still. something in his voice that just screams betrayal when he's like, "Prime, you said this I, would guide us in our darkest that only hour." Robert Stack can pull off in that that deep yet sad voice. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think it was betrayal though. I think it was I I think it was um, stress. And I think it was resentment. Oh, no, no. no. I don't I, think I it was betrayal. I think it was because, resentment. Because Prime chose him. He's on his deathbed. He gave it to him. Ah. And and that should have been it, right? I mean, there was the whole flashy foreshadowing thing no, with no, 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 but he doesn't know that. He just thought that's part of the thing is it comes out yeah. of Optimus. And he holds it and he's doing his last stand. He had just sealed his friends in and he's going to face them all all by himself. And no, I'm sorry. You're not the chosen Which one. It's I, dying time. I really didn't understand why he didn't go in with his friends and then 
shoot from inside to collapse so that they're inside and they're outside. I think we're just going to have to take a big fat pill of suspension of reality for this whole movie. <laughs> well, almost every movie. Because there's things yeah. like, why didn't you do it this way? Because, well, that's not what the writer wanted. I, I would have a great interest in seeing a tactically sound movie. I really would. It would probably be boring as hell. But, I mean, it probably the payoff would. would be great. And I, I think the, the director wanted to do something like that. But... Hasbro was like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. We're, we're, we're making a commercial. So, they just needed more death. Yeah, there, there does need to be more death in the yeah. movie. Oddly, I think Ultra Magnus, the, the toy, mm -hmm. came out at a similar time because he was definitely part of Series 3, I want to say, which is where you got Blur, Cup, mm -hmm. Hot Rod. I mean, all of, these, all of these guys. I think they just wanted to show that he wasn't the chosen one. We're not going to do two semis in a row. No, but when Hot Rod became Rodimus Prime, it was that weird. That was an El Camino with a trailer. That that, that was a <laughs> no, it, it, no. It was like it, it, I don't think it was an El Camino. I think it was. I think it was that mid '80s Night Rider Trans Am front. Yeah, with the caveman pickup ass on the back of it. Yeah, you know that that I I don't. I'm I'm gonna go live in 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 my camper. <laughs> that because that's what that's what Rodimus Prime to me with this really weird coloring of flames and red i mean mm -hmm. optimus prime had some awesome coloring done i mean it was just red but yeah. it was still red and silver for the trailer but rodimus prime was this weird color to me as a well kid. that was the the neon phase gi joe did the same thing and at about the same and time it was horrible it was the death knell of both the franchises actually which were only recently brought back I remember watching G.I. Joe all, all the way through to my tweens and teens yeah when the eco warriors came on the scene I had those <laughs> toys. Y yeah, you had yeah, them. I skipped but by those. They had all the cables that connected around and the tubes. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They had, like, pieces. And the pieces problem was cool. is that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles did it better at that that's, time. That's true. Yeah. I mean, they really did. Yeah, and they, pizza and cowabunga. Yeah. <laughs> we're diverting. <laughs> we're, yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> One of the things that I, that I liked about the movie was who actually directed it and worked on it. And that was Nelson Shin, who was also, he worked on the Pink Panther films, but more notably out of everything, he worked on the rotoscope animation for the lightsaber blades in the original Star Wars films. Oh. So back before. Yeah, because they were just like sticks, right? Yeah, they were, they were sticks that Alec Guinness used and. Yeah, uh, which is why they held them like that. It, which is very odd. And there's a scene, if you, if you ever, I know this is a, a diversion also but if you ever see the uncut unremastered version of star wars there's the scene where you can see where yes obi-wan yeah, is yeah. there he's circling it and you can see just the stick because yeah. the rotoscoping was it was a horrible angle i honestly never knew that i mean i just found out what rotoscoping was not too long ago so <laughs> what else you got for us here dusty quite a bit so give me a few moments and i can kind of deep dive into that You have no idea. So, really? Yeah, check this out. So Nelson Shin, the director, he ended up after he did a few early things with the Pink Panther and the and with Star Wars. Uh -huh. He went on to be the founding person and president of Acom Production Company. They do much of the animation uh, through a lot of American television, and a lot of people don't know what they watch now gets its start from back Shin doing Transformers. Some of his credits that he's that he's worked on recently, like The Simpsons. Batman the Animated Series. Oh, I love Batman I the Animated I have, Series. I have friends that just love it. That's her thing is Batman the Animated Series. Uh, X-Men Seasons 1 through 5, you know, the X-Men Animated Series. Animaniacs was another really big one. Really? Yeah. Earthworm Jim, uh, Gargoyles. 
I, oh, I know Gargoyles. you guys. Are, yeah. yeah, I mean Jonathan Frakes. Oh, Gargoyles Jonathan was a, Frakes. a big one. Keith David Frax? Yeah, Frakes. I, I, Frakes. Frakes. Jonathan Frakes. Right. Jonathan Frakes. Right. Frakes. Yeah, he will correct you from what I've been told. Frack and Jonathan Frakes. <laughs> Jem. Remember Jem and the holograms? Oh my God, Jem was awful. <laughs> Truly outrageous. <laughs> yeah, outrageous. It was terrible. I, Outrageously yeah. horrible. I, 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 I have friends that will fight you, it. though. I have friends that will fight Look, you on that comment. Bring it. Bring it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had an ex force me to watch this show. She was obsessed with it. She was trying to like relive her 80s toy childhood. And we were oh, watching We all Jim. go through that phase. And you know, Jim, they're the phonies. The misfits were the ones who played their instruments. Mm-hmm. They were actual musicians. <laughs> they were terrible people, but they were actual musicians. Whereas Jim and them, everything that they did was fake. It was all computer generated. What, you mean Jim and the holograms? <laughs> yeah. They, they were, they were auto tuned. So we're just teaching, <laughs> teaching young kids that all you got to do is plagiarize and fake it and you're going to beat actual punk rock musician. It's all your fault, Hasbro. You made Blink 182. <laughs> He also did the land before time parts. First one? No, no, parts two through six. Ah. Cause there's a lot of those movies. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I remember some me. of that from yeah. my sister. Uh, the tick animated. Oh. Yes. He's I know. back alive. He's I know. Back alive. And then the very short lived Robocop the animated series. I watched that. I, I know. Gonna, I've never caught that one. Oh. Before. Yeah, but his most well known accomplishment is his direction of the television series for Transformers. As well as Transformers, the movie. Yeah. So that those are his a few of his biggies coming into. He's got some today chops. Oh yeah, he's he's got he's got some street cred from yeah. from what I think <laughs> I think that's what the kids say today. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if you could see my face, right? <laughs> oh my god! Why don't we have video? <laughs> we will. Yes, yes, yes. So have we mentioned Leonard Nimoy? Yeah, we did. Like, I think at the top of the show. You oh, know, okay. Why don't you just mention him again? Because he's fun to mention. He's Leonard Nimoy. Yes. And I, I got to tell you, for the longest time, when when I was a child, and mm-hmm. I didn't know who Orson Welles was, mm-hmm. and I wasn't paying too close attention to the credits because the movie's about to start, I thought Leonard Nimoy was doing uh, freaking... The, the the planet Unicron Unicron yeah <laughs> I was going to help you I just wanted to see how long you know you had to go. D- did you notice that everyone looks up and to the right when they're consulting their internal memory yes like searching 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 it's like I... the, it's a click on the hard drive yeah. the flashing light <laughs> you know I've thought about that every time I do it occasionally will catch myself and try to stare someone right in the eyes <laughs> just You're... creeps them out hey, that's that's a little creepy the budget for this movie was a pittance compared to today. I mean, today's movies, if you don't spend an upwards of I mean, 20 million is typically an indie film. Yeah. This the animation was, was fairly decent, even for the time. Yeah. It was 6 million. That's it. Really? For the budget. That was done deal. That's. And Shin was not only working on this movie, but he was also working on the series at the same time. Really? So it was a lot of double duty that was going on. But the opening weekend only took in about 1.7 million. Ouch. Was he not also involved in the G.I. Joe movie that was that same year? I believe so. The Cobra La with uh, Serpentor mm-hmm. and all of them. I, oh, I You like actually that. have to say it right. Cobra La 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 La. Oh, God, no. <laughs> you know, uh, they're battle cries. I had, they leap into battle. I did have all of those toys. I, yeah, me too. I had, quite, my, I had quite a few G.I. Joes. My neighbor had like all of the G.I. I mean, when I say all, his parents, all of the G.I. Joe See, toys. I had all of the Masters of the Universe. That was the only one that I fully collected. That was another big one that my parents did and for me, I too. I think my mom was more into it than I was. I don't know why. The she battle just, she likes some muscly and wearing yeah, leather. Yeah, the maybe. battle scar He-Man. Remember that oh, one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My broke mine. I used it so much. I just kept tapping <laughs> it. And finally, it came loose and it was wobbly. And then he- He-Man had this wobbly thing in his chest that was kind of creepy. <laughs> it was his pacemaker. Oh, oh, poor Prince Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave away a secret the, identity. The gross return on this movie, though, was $5.7 million. So it almost made it. Almost made it. Adjusted for inflation to two, to 2017, the movie actually cost about $13 million to make. As a loss leader, though, that sold a lot of so toys. So let's say that in a hypothetical situation, let's mm-hmm. say a director, oh, yeah, maybe somebody, Michael Bay, were to <laughs> consider making a Transformers movie today, yeah. how much do you think it would hypothetically cost him to make were that to ever happen, which it hasn't? I want to say that I think the Bay first Transformers cost a little over $100 million to make. Wow. I'm the foggiest idea. 
Bay doesn't exist yeah. to me. He it, knows it, what he that, did. That was a that that was a major undertaking for he any director. Yeah, and just I mean, just on the CG alone and the level of explosions, they had a decent amount of names in some of those too. I think getting like, Peter Cullen to come in and reprise his Optimus role, yeah, helped that movie. I have lot. like a five minute scene where he's talking about masturbation. That was a little weird. I'm sorry. You don't remember that? Where in, in the first... Tra- the, oh, sorry. I forgot. That movie doesn't exist. Yeah. Never mind. It, it doesn't. <laughs> I was looking at it. Like, totally it happened. shall not be named. Wow. That was sweet. Went off on a different... Explody path. bots. But the domestic... GoBots, y'all. GoBots. <laughs> now, imagine if Michael Bay did GoBots. You know, there was a GoBot movie, too. I hated too. GoBots. They were crappy. Did, did you no, see I those? Just, I just hated the... You didn't see the GoBot movie? I didn't know there was a GoBots yeah, movie. There, oh, there, there is. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's horrible. It is. I just never really... They weren't as cool. They weren't as big. And they just... They didn't have Peter Cullen? No, it just... They, they never... Had actually, some cool play sets. The play sets, yeah, they but did. But the toys were... themselves, I agree. Like, looking back upon it, when I was a kid, I loved them. But I found some of them, like, a couple of years ago. And I remember looking at thinking... I played with this. This is awful. I, I forget if the GoBots, the leader uh, was... Leader one. Was that the motorcycle or was there... It was the jet. Okay, no. so... The, the motorcycle was the bad guy. Was the bad he? guy. Okay, yeah. so leader bad guy yeah. is but, a motorcycle. The bad guy, no, the bad guy was a leader, helicopter named Coptor. Cannon. That's a very inventive name. I know, right? I'd rather have the cannon toy. The cannon? Oh, yeah. you mean the tiny little handgun? The cannon. The, the one that, you know. Okay, put it. Kids. It's a cannon in a 50 foot tall robot. Why does that he is ever a cannon. Transform? He's a 50 foot tall robot because he's a leader. He doesn't have to. Handheld Glock or whatever. Some, sorry. Walther. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, somebody is going to correct me. I Yo. know it. <laughs> I thought it looked like a Desert Eagle. I thought it was like a 50 cal. Oh, out, hand God, cannon. no. It's, out. This, is, this is a Bond gun, <laughs> man. Sorry. I didn't. <laughs> With a shoulder the Bond star. gun, that little pea shooter. Pew, pew, pew. Bond is a pea shooter. I, but yeah. <laughs> if you have a 20-foot long cannon on your arm, mm-hmm. why would you ever transform into like an 8-inch handgun that does significantly less damage no, than your cannon? He's a, it's a 50-foot robot turning into a like 10-foot long gun. So why it is a cannon. Do that? I, don't, I don't know. Oh, and not just that, but why would you do that and then let yourself be fired by... Star Scream of all people, the most, the biggest douchebag yeah. in the entire series. Give it to your lieutenant, Soundwave. Yeah, Soundwave was cool. He was a bro. Yeah, he was. Well, I'm sort sorry. Of. He was the best Transformer. Autobots, Decepticons. He was hands down the best. Disagree. Best there. Second sorry, best. You are wrong. Grimlar. Grimlar. Sorry. And you are wrong. Grimlar. No, 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 no. Both best. wrong. You, and I'm no, 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 no longer doing this podcast. <laughs> Three in. I'm ending this right now. It's Jetfire. He's, that's Robotech. Come on. Yeah, it was. Actually, <laughs> sorry, guys. It's RC. Jetfire is still being RC, sold today. I, the Smurfette of the Transformers. You shut your Which mouth. Which was great. No, I loved RC. RC was great. It was a great design. The whole package, everything was great. But they did the same. The, the, Hasbro did the same thing that, that the Smurfs did. One female robot. That was it. There should have been more. Yeah, and I was actually... Looking up details on RC, apparently in one of the comic series or one of the many uh, additional Transformers thematic universes, they tell a story about how she was specifically designed Mm -hmm. that way in her backstory to be the first female form of the robots. I don't really know why. I do know that in one of the later series, they made her something of a psychopath. Again, I don't know why. But I'm just going to say that pink and white RC was probably... My first, oh my god, yes, my first animated crush. Okay. The second, of course, being Gadget. 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 Yeah. God, but I have to think back. Hmm. The funny that you make comment about them changing her for, for a few things, this, that, and the other. Let's they, get his crush. Okay. I, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think. I, that's I why I was going because he <laughs> was, weird he was really I'm looking thinking. at his face. This is, this is going to go in some outtakes. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I'd, I'd have to say Lady J. She unbuttoned quite a bit. Oh, G.I. Joe? G.I. Yeah. Joe. Which yeah. one was, uh, she, okay. she was the one, picture, the one with the spear and the, and the and the video camera. Yeah, Bunny Scarlet tail? was the redhead with like the skin tight. Or and the, the throwing stars. And Lady, Lady J, J was a brunette dressed all in green. Real short hair that was always hanging out with Duke. Like, what was yeah. the one with the ponytail? That was usually Scarlet. Yeah. 
Okay. The redhead. So Lady J. That's is the kind where of my love one. of redheads come from. Then. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Shirt with pockets yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah she was okay. basically the, the the female version of Duke. Yeah. You're you're still saying Duke. I think it was Flint. Uh, Scarlet and Duke were together. Scarlet and Duke were together. Yeah, there was a a thing where she was in love with Snake Eyes, but it was oh, see, it's lately, been so it was long. Lady J and Flint. It's been so long since I've really paid attention to. Anyway, that was that, Joe. Thinking back, that was my first, probably okay. the, the so, first crush on. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Duke mm-hmm. and Optimus Prime's death, they had planned to do the same thing with Duke in the GI Joe movie. Yes, they did. But the outcry against Optimus Prime was so forced oh, yeah. them to change it that they just put him in a coma. It mm-hmm. broke my little kitty heart. I mean, <laughs> it really did. To this day, I'm, my name is Matthew Gray. I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm 40 years old. I am six foot two. I've been in easily 70 bar fights and i still get a little misty eyed whenever i see that scene i I don't break down but optimus no 26 (laughs) minutes in my friends that's when my childhood died (laughs) (laughs) that's that's pinpointing it right to the to the second i i mean i know we've we've watched it on dvd and blu-ray and we can in my special steelbook edition by the way which i brought I've lost more editions than I care to town. Somebody asked they could borrow them. I think the one I have now is like a Korean knockoff that you actually have no, to change it, it to is. English. No, it, it is. It yeah. is a Korean knockoff. I've, I've bought bad. it too many times. I wasn't going to buy it The again. artwork, you can look at the artwork on the front and it's totally been printed by a, 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 a printer. It was a desktop. Yeah. Going out of, uh, of ink. That reminds me of the Robert Cop toys. This oh, the, the RoboCop Chinese yeah. knockoff toys. Oh, it's a Robert Cop. Yes, I re- I remember those. It was they were very horrible. They introduced a lot in this too. I mean, this is where the triple changers were first dropped. Um, God damn it! I do not remember these at all. I don't know how you cannot remember these things. Gobots, Astro- remember Gobots? Well, but I mean, still, I I mean, you, you had television, didn't you? I stopped watching after this movie because your childhood was destroyed. Yeah, in I didn't watch minutes. any more Transformers after this movie. I thought I felt. In, I felt hurt. I felt like they no longer had my childhood interest. It's, it, it's, it's really hard to say, but at the time, everything was done with laughter at the end and everyone was back next week for the next show. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really hard to overstate to a, a young person. I think I was eight or nine, maybe ten. Uh, ten tops. It, it came out in 86, so I would have been... I was nine. I was nine, too. I was yeah. six. It, it's hard to overstate how much Optimus's death rocked a young kid, because that, that had been the hero for years, right? Mm-hmm. This was, I don't remember when the, the thing first came out, but he's still my hero, Matthew. But it, it, it had been going for, that's why they brought him back. I, I think, I think Transformers started 80, at least in the U.S., I think it was yeah. 82 or 83. Yeah. So we're talking a good four years of just avid viewership, mm-hmm. the toys, the just everything. Inundated. Yeah. Everything Transformers, Boom. Transformers birthday cake, and then Optimus Halloween dies. Costumes. And it, it's, it's really hard to Balloons. explain. How much that that rocked someone who isn't even double digit years yet, and it's not past the middle point of the movie. It's not at the end of the movie. Yeah, twenty. Where what did you say? Twenty six minutes. Twenty six minutes in. Yeah, he's gonna every every time someone. <laughs> if, if if there's ever like the trivia show that 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 want to dial in a friend, and I can't remember when when did Optimus Prime die? At what point in the movie did Optimus Prime? I, I will call Nathaniel and say, Hey, I forgot the time. You tell me, and I just won ten million dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he, he, I won't even finish the question. It was like twenty six minutes. So that, that'll be it. I know that Nathaniel loathes Starscream, mm-hmm. but as far as NPCs go, Starscream is probably my favorite. Oh my god, he's he's the Grima Worm Tongue. I'm he's, sorry, I thought oh, I was your yeah. favorite. Oh shucks. Oh right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Those are my initials, in case you didn't know. But from from the gameables, it would I would have a lot of fun both writing what Starscream is going to do and doing his voice at the table. God, that would kill my voice. <laughs> no, Megatron. I mean, it, it would it would just be fun. I I think Soundwave. I know you like Soundwave, but oh yeah. I mean, I, I do have a voice modulator program on this computer that I might. When editing this, I'll see if I can uh, splice in some things. I actually specifically have a Megatron voice that I, I custom tuned it based on a YouTube instruction on how to work with this software. It sounds really cool. Yeah. Soundwave for me. I yeah. mean, he even sounds like a Cylon, an old school Cylon. <laughs> yeah. And he really I, does. He had, he had the six cassettes that were his, that was his little army 
which I know they brought in Blaster specifically for this movie. To never as that. cool as Soundwave. No, he was I never like as Blaster. cool. But but I just oh I just love that character Soundwave for me. I, maybe but, maybe I'm weird in this, but I've always been more drawn to the good guys. It's because Soundwave is loyal to Megatron. <laughs> I mean, uh, he, he Soundwave is, is is the power behind the throne. Seriously, oh, seriously, yeah. He, he is. He is the power behind. He is the most loyal, but he's also the power. I, in my head canon, he's the one that's saying you need to do this. You need to do this. Well, he seized his chance to get rid of Megatron when they were on the when they were on the train going through space. Yes, the and train that turns into a shuttle that yeah. turned into something else. A robot. Yeah, a, a robot, robot form as well. After after the fight with Optimus mm-hmm. and Optimus hits him and goes, you know, never. Yeah, the, the nine Decepticons versus the six Autobots. And yeah, the, and a huge city. But he's he's loyal at that moment, but you know five space miles out from Cybertron, <laughs> which is apparently what they were. I mean, because you could almost that's see a unit it out of there. measure five space, space miles. miles. <laughs> that that would be Star Blazers. But uh, he just he abandons him, throws him out the ship, specifically to jettison some weight. Yeah, what yeah. does that mean? You're in space, and I also thought these robots could fly. That was half, yeah. half yeah. the point of being a Decepticon is that you weren't grounded. Yeah, mm-hmm. they all have jets in their feet. All of them? All of them. Yeah, they all do. Uh, every Decepticon even the can cassette, fly. Even the cassette tape characters could lift jump. But yeah. not all the Autobots could. No. I didn't no. know that distinction. Mm-hmm. Huh. Learn something new every it's day. It's a thing. Cassette bots still kill me. I just... Help me if I'm ever writing a show to try and future-proof myself without media. It's, it's handier now because things are going digital, mm-hmm. right? But God knows what the interfaces are going to look like or how storage is going to change over the years. One day somebody might make a series of new movies inspired by the original toy line. You've got to stop doing this. Top that. But, uh, those, those might answer your question if that ever happens. But until then, I guess they don't exist. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I, I think they would have to change some of them around and not have maybe a slower car and turn into a faster Camaro. That would probably be good for what, the new damn movie. It. God yeah, maybe. damn it! Yeah. One and then, shall and then, stand and one and shall then, fall in the how, animated stands, and then and then make Bumblebee not be able to talk. Uh, Bumblebee was like the yes man. I mean, he, no, he Bumblebee was, is awesome. I love yeah. Bumblebee. Actually, I prefer. And in the other animated, I pref- he's a great character. You're gonna hate me for this, probably. Go ahead at I, your own risk. I really like Bay's Bumblebee a lot more than the animated Bumblebee. I've never walked out on a show yet, and I'm not going to now. <laughs> However, you don't get any more old granddad. Where's my bottle? <laughs> and yet, Blur. Now, Blur, I thought, was a really cool character, specifically because Blur was voiced by the person that I always know as the Micro, the Machine, micro Machine Man. man. Yeah, now, I know that. Is that the same guy? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, yeah, he gave John, his fame from, from uh, the FedEx yep. commercial that changed oh, no mm-hmm. crap. advertising, but... He's the Micro Machines man forever in my head. Yeah, his his name is actually John, and I might butcher this. John Moshita. Moshita? You probably butchered it. Moshita? Yeah. It's M O S C H I T T A Jr. Uh, he was actually the voice for Micro Machines. He is the one time Guinness World Record holder of articulate speed talking, which is a thing. Oh, yeah, like auctioneers and whatnot. There are yeah. Guinness records for freaking everything. No, I, think I, a I know. Record he, for the longest donut. His thing. was 586 words per minute. Uh, wow. I, I remember reading wow. about him. He did Michael Jackson's Beat yeah. It song in less than 20 seconds. I just watched that <laughs> <Yeah>. video. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it took four and a half minutes and condensed it down into 20 seconds. I like that there's a lot of things about this universe that we never get to hear about. Like, there's apparently... Robots are very common out there. Apparently? Because there's planets of junk. Mm -hmm. And to make a whole planet of junk, you would have to have many planets spewing out junk. And it's all robot junk. Mm Mm-hmm. When when they land on the the planet with the, the judges and the tribunal and the Sharktacons, every form of life in that ocean was robotic based. And I, I like the assumption that Earth is the anomaly with squishy carbon-based life on it, which may explain why the Autobots are, like, defending it. Because, I mean, if it was just another planet of junk... They wouldn't have cared. Yeah, they wouldn't have bothered. But here we are, something new and unique. And that might explain the actual backstory and would be a good gameable concept for why things happen the way they are. You have to protect the squishies. Because they're squishy. I think that should be a whole new game. Protect the squishy. Protect the squishy. <laughs> I do like the idea of having that as some kind of a inherent failure state in any kind of the roles or the conflicts that you would make in a game. What do you mean? 
you play a D&D game and there's very much there's very little in a failure state there. You you roll the die, you swing your sword, you either hit or you miss or you might critically hit or occasionally if you're playing with a certain DM you might also critically fail. Yeah. But imagine if always on the table as part of your action one of the consequences of failure is and another hundred or thousand people die. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, people that, that certainly raises the stakes. Squishies. A that would be a fun die. game, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, it you, would. you couldn't just be an asshole gamer unless you were a sociopath to begin with. And of course, as we all know, gamers are that or, way. You ever watch no. the, the <laughs> giant monster, giant robot fight things like Ultraman or the Power yeah, Rangers yeah, yeah. or any of those? There's always a big old, they always segue to a big fight between the big giant monster and the assembled form of the robot. Yeah. And they invariably trash the fucking city in this fight. And then it's over and they go back like, nothing happened. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. we're back in town. We saved How all many of people you people. Done? Oh, we magically managed to evacuate the city moments before this fight happened. Well, no. I mean, no. think about it this way, though. Like, even just stepping on the street, the sewer line breaks. It leaks into the water main. All of a sudden, everyone has diphtheria. I mean, when you're a giant robot, you have to when be you're careful. You're weighing thousands of tons? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I want to play that game. Yeah, it would be kind of. I mean, dark. that that might be why they were way out in the countryside having that's where their Autobot own city, city yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Once you get into the city areas, just them being there, the, the, the sheer act up. of standing on a city street. I mean, you there are weight limits to these things. I mean, mm-hmm. when a hundred thousand pound robot stands, the ground compacts, which means there's not ground for the skyscraper on either side, which means those lean forward. I mean, even without trading blows and throwing each other through buildings. The collateral this, damage is huge. Yeah, they, they, okay, let's fight. Okay, I step in front of the Empire State Building. Yeah. Ha ha, your move. I think, and I know we, we tend to play more uh, role-playing games on this, but I, I also think this would make a very interesting miniatures game. Uh, something that is more, more tactically based, like, uh, say, a battle tech mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, actually, I've got one coming to mind. I wasn't even, I haven't thought about this game in years, Mm -hmm. but something about when I asked earlier, did you ever play RPGs or did it ever inspire you? Suddenly I remembered Shadowrun had a very short lived minis game, but it was, oh, that's right. It wasn't minis, minis. It was like, it was big minis, 12 inch. They were about the size of, of like Optimus Prime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eight or nine inch minis. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, each of the minis has like a stand and you can take the stand off. I keep Mm -hmm. calling it minis, but they're really, they're figurines. I don't remember the term, but the stand opened up and it had a little ticker and it had this rollout tape with some numbers uh-huh. and you can measure things and you had rules for what you could do. You could totally do that with Transformers. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Yeah. Pull I, out your I, old I toys. Forgot about that as well. Especially if you pull out a whole bunch of army men to be the <laughs> the humans with it. Oh, yeah. Squish, squish, the, the squishies. Squish, squish. The squishies. <laughs> I actually, um, because as you know with this show, if you've been following along, we're going to game one of these movies and we're going to do it live in video. And just on the off chance it was Transformers. I did buy a large bag of smaller than normal army men. They're like this big. Um, I'm holding my fingers about an inch apart. That is just because I wanted, if Transformers comes up, to throw them on the on the gaming mat. You know, that's actually a good segue. Let's talk about gaming in just a moment. Hello, everyone. You are listening to Half Movies Will Game, and this is Nathaniel. We're about halfway through the show with a lot of exciting RPG content coming up in just a minute. First. I want to take a very quick moment to tell you a bit about what we're up to here. We recorded these first four episodes as a proof of commitment to ourselves before we went forward with an official launch. We learned a lot through this process, upgraded our equipment a little bit, and figured out some tricks that we didn't really know going into the thing. We hope you can hear our improvement as the show progresses. Please bear with us as we iron out the wrinkles and know that we appreciate any feedback you have for us, especially so at this crucial early juncture of the show. In the future, this break space will be used to promote our friends and sponsors, and we're excited to talk more about them. So thanks again for making it this far, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the show. Okay, now let's get into a deep dive into the gameable aspects of this. We've already mentioned a few of them prior, but let's take it a little bit further. As we do in our podcast here, we talk about movies and then we sort of bring them to the gaming table. This time, Transformers, infinitely gameable mm-hmm. movie. Oh, yeah. 
there are so many big robot fans out there, and many of those big robot fans write games, which means there are so many big robot games out there <laughs> that you can play. Now, we tend to gather a few ideas, and we shuffle them around a little bit before we kind of pick one that we're going to present as our one true way to play. Now, of course, this is just our opinion. You probably got many other ways that you think would be better for a game like this. And there's a lot of runner runners up too. I mean, there there's a lot of different games that could almost work for and, this. And there's also a lot that just show as well. I yeah. mean, you, so and not just that. There's a whole lot that none of us have even heard of. Oh my so, god, so many. Again, if you hear anything here that you like, let us know. But if you find something that we missed, then let please, us know in the comment section below. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I I I I would like to say one thing before we we do a deep dive. I am inspired and a little bit humbled by the amount of small indie games that are coming out lately. Like this, this has been something that's only been, it's been less than a decade that this explosion. Yeah, because games have happened. you had the, the, the big ones, you know, back in the day, it was TSR, TSR and then, then they moved to Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, and you and had Palladium and, and, you know, a few others. Gerps. Um, I, I'd say no more than 20. But now there's literally thousands. Yeah. We can go down to Guardian and look at a wall of indie games. And we can have a beer while we're at it. Yes. <laughs> at the Barley Mill. Uh, also at Guardian. Anyway, <laughs> there are so many games here that we don't know about them. But the best part about there's so many of these games that we're going to be making this podcast for a while. Because I think we'll always be able to pick a new game. So yeah, there's a lot of games out there. There's more coming out every day, frequently on Kickstarter, a number of which I have backed. Uh, there's a number of which I've never even heard of. I don't think we'll even begin to be able to touch Oh yeah, all the possible games that you could use. We might say this again in the future, but I feel like I kind of want to say it now to give some depth to what exactly it is that we're going to be talking about here. This plethora of games is going to give us plenty to talk about in the future. I we'll agree. always be able to match any movie to something there may be some generic systems out there we've mentioned savage worlds there's cortex there's fate there's of course gurps yeah there's many generic systems out there that can accomplish any of these we're going to do our best to try and not focus heavily on the generic systems until we find something that is absolutely perfect for it mm -hmm. yeah agreed that's a good idea uh, as I do, I've been shopping around for ideas on my Google Plus feed and occasionally on Facebook, looking for people who might have ideas on how to play these movies. For this one, I got a bunch of responses, and many of these I've never actually read, but I want to give these as kind of a preliminary honorable yeah. mention. First is D20 Mechamorphosis. I've mm. never even looked at it. I hope I'm spelling and pronouncing it right in my notes. Apparently, it is a source book for the D20 system. My assumption would be for the old D20 future system, which was based on the old D20 modern system. Oh, I love D20 modern. I really did like oh, the way I it broke it. everything down into six easy classes. I mean, some people were like, oh, you can't really shoehorn everything. But come on. It's a class-based game mm -hmm. on a modern system. Take it, Take what you will. Yeah. Yeah, D20 Modern was a fantastic take on the D20 system. I particularly love their... Pul they did a, an add-on, like an expansion at some point, and it was all the pulp, like World War II kind of pulp action stuff. Oh, nice. And I really liked it. I ran a lot of sessions under that. Do you remember that. what it was called? I never played that one. I think it was just D20 Modern Pulp. I think that's that was just the name of it. Right. Well, we'll have to definitely double-check that one. Yes. Uh, another one that was mentioned to me was called Mechton Zeta. Have any of you played this one? Oh, I've no, never I haven't even heard, heard of it. I feel like a bad gamer. I've heard this name many, many times. It keeps popping up every time somebody mentions giant robots. And I'm ashamed to say I've never even looked at it. Because it also kind of reminds me of another game that I might not even know how to pronounce. I think there's a number of games out there that are like Mechton, Mechaton. They, they have similar names and I always get them confused. Maybe if you know this one, perhaps it's going to be good for you and your Transformers dreams come true at the gaming table. Big Contender is one called Big Eyes, Small Mouth. It is, was? I don't know. Maybe it is still out there. I have an old school copy of it from back in the day. Big Eyes, Small Mouth is the anime role playing game. It is very simple. It uses the old tri-stat system where you have body, mind, and soul. Very simple stats. One thing that I do remember from when I was first looking at it 
one of the character traits that you could get was literally called own a big robot. That's and then you get to build awesome. the robot out. So, hey, you get a character and you can own a big robot. So this one that you're talking about, big eyes, small mouth. B-E-S-M. Yes, B-E-S-M. Not uh, to be confused with the yeah. <laughs> thing here that is <laughs> That's making a Matthew different chuckle. podcast. Ah! There are a lot of them out there. Back to those Dungeon Trust Masters, me. right? <laughs> uh, that game is actually now 20 years old. The first edition came out in 1997. That, yeah, that's Sec- about when I grabbed it. Second Ed came out in 2001, and the third one was 2007. Wow. Uh, I gotta sorry, say, I'm just, familiar with none of these games so far. Just a little bit of tidbit of reference there. Yeah, it's a super quick, easy to play, fast system again. Only three stats. They mm-hmm. they have some cool. awesome sounding supplementals. I, 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 one of them is Big Robots, Cool Starships. Boom! There you go. Transformers. I like it. Yeah, uh, and then uh, mic drop. But I'm not going to drop the mic. Because <laughs> Please don't. <they're> expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and then they also have uh, Space Fantasy and uh, Dark Hearts. This all sounds really, really, really good stuff. I would really be down to playing this. And again, Transformers being. An anime, perhaps you want to play the anime role-playing game for Transformers. Now, what I want to get to specifically is the game that I feel is practically perfect for Transformers. Lay it on us. This game was kickstarted back in, I believe, 2014. It's by a fellow named Preston Poland. It is called The Robotic Age. The Robotic Age is a role-playing game set in the 22nd century. Now, it was initially... If you've ever actually seen a television show called Almost Human, Mm -hmm. this is Almost Human, the role-playing game, the core setting of it. Okay. You build a character that's either a human, a transhuman, a cyborg, or a straight-up robot, or an android. Are they giant robots or human-sized robots? By the core book, they are a mix. Uh Uh-huh. However, when the Kickstarter was released, Preston released a number of promotional supplements for the Kickstarter backers, which, which I believe that you can get from Drive Through RPG. Where yes, you can also get uh, the core book. I'm what, actually what, what looking is... at Drive Through RPG right now. And and I, I'm sorry to... for those of us who are unfamiliar with it. What is Drive Through RPG? Drive Through RPG is a website. It's kind of like the Steam of RPGs. Uh, mostly, it's PDFs. You can also get everything from... You can get print-on-demand books. Oh, that's nice. You can get print-on-demand Warhammer books. You can get print-on-demand indie books. Uh, You can actually get all of the old D&D catalog now through there as well. Oh, nice. We should should put that in the the link dump. Yep. This game that you're actually referencing, they do have it on their site, and you can get several different versions of it, either just PDF, the soft cover, or the hard cover. When they launched the Kickstarter, uh, one of the rewards you could get were hacks of the system, uh, tra- ways to translate the rules to match uh-huh. different themes. The serial numbers of all of these things, of course, are filed off. So in these hacks, they don't quite come out and say, this is a role-playing game to play X specific mm-hmm. named property. But it's clear in the way that they word that it is. And there's like one that. that's themed after Gundam. There's uh-huh. one that's themed after Mega Man. There's one that's themed after the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> and then finally, there's one that is very clearly, obviously themed after the Transformers. <laughs> Complete with a several page document on how to translate the rules to match the Transformers. What What's this one called? The, the, the tweak? The, the game is called Robotic Age. The tweak for it is simply called Customization Packet T. Okay. Mm -hmm. This customization packet is designed to help you tailor your robotic age game to be more like the popular robot franchise that starts with a T. (laughs) Right. Okay. What it says. That's that's, they're skirting it there, but all right. That's not subtle. Not subtle. (laughs) Not subtle at all. Let's get a little bit deeper. It comes with example characters, one of which is named Maximus Alpha, (laughs) who is the leader of the Cardroids. The Cardroids. Yes. They they weren't even trying. (laughs) I mean, it was just better. Please. Then we have Ultrabot, who is the leader of the Deceitotrons. The Deceitotrons. For a moment, I I thought you, for a moment, I, I seriously heard, even with the headphones on, I really thought you said Dorito Trons. It was like Those, that's the one <laughs> that's going to come in the expansion. Probably, I guess it's going to be voiced by Michael Palin. <laughs> God, so there is an expansion. <laughs> it's a Mars expansion, apparently. It was kickstarted. Oh, I don't nice. remember it succeeding. Yeah, uh, it's, it's twenty fifteen. So it it, it did, did succeed. Yes, it did. Oh well, excellent. I am. I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah. 
But this game is super simple. It is a percentile based game. Uh, so some people love those. Some people hate them. Everybody's got their opinion. 50 50 with it. Personally. You, you get a chance to use those <laughs> dice. Uh, funny. Uh, yeah, I know. I try. That skipped me until you laughed at it. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad, Dusty. Not bad. <laughs> I like puns. What can I say? I'm I'm not it, it, evolved. It's a percentile based game. You again, you you have a stat. That stat's going to be a certain number. I'm sorry. You actually don't have stats. You have skills. Uh huh. Everything else is kind of assumed that your character can just kick ass. Yeah. And the rest of it is listed in like numerical skills. So anyway, you you have these skills. Whenever you want to do something, you roll percentile dice and you try to get equal to or less than the number. It's that simple. And you kind of go with it. Okay. Yep. How does how does combat work? Combat is Same. very it's very basic combat. You you do some initiative uh, and then on your turn you get a few actions and those actions tend to be grand and epic in scale. Okay. And then it's like a a roll for success or a roll for success. Okay. It has this quirk of the system that I am not 100% fond of and What's that? I've seen a number of other games do this where you want to try and succeed at something. So you roll your dice. And you might already have a low margin of success as it is, and you are lucky enough, you roll those dice and you get that success. Mm -hmm. I got a 25% chance. Yes, I got it. (laughs) But then your opponent has a defensive ability, and then they get to roll it based on their own chance of success. It has nothing to do with your chance and everything to do with theirs. And if they roll and get it, then you didn't succeed. Okay. Okay. But it's two separate rolls. It's not a roll right. that's based on the other one. You I, roll and succeed, but they roll and succeed, and it cancels out your success. And, and and what happens in that case? I mean, do you just... Whoever has the higher ability wins. Okay. Okay. So let's say your chance of success is 15, and their chance of defense is 30. Right. So you roll that incredibly lucky roll, 15% or lower, on mm-hmm. a percentile die, and you succeed. All right, yes, you're so excited, you won. And they're like, oh, well, I'm going to roll to defend. And they got a defensive roll. But let's say that they roll worse than you, but they still succeed. Doesn't matter. Their defensive roll, their defensive skill is better than your offensive skill. So then it just becomes a point of comparing numbers. And at that point, why isn't the whole system just It it sounds like it moves faster, though, than, say, like a traditional D20 system or something. It's just a few rolls. For this whole thing to happen. Yes. I think a faster way of moving it would be to turn defense into a modifier to the offense. To, you know, have one affect the other, essentially. Make it one roll instead of two. It still sounds faster than D20. Though. It does. Much it faster. really does. Well, I mean, D20 don't get me wrong. Just... I, I, I like D20 if you're a detail-oriented person. But it, it can bog down, especially if you're trying to do grandiose, you know, epic moves. Matthew, hmm. I see you looking at some books over there. Some books. You've got a, a raised <laughs> eyebrow. I've, I've got this, a thing. This like, and it seems like you are all right, but, 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 but I'm, I'm not going thing? to challenge it because I think specifically with giant robots fighting, there there's there's a lot of things. And I'm I'm honestly surprised that if you didn't make this list that you tossed out there, uh like Battletech, that's giant robots. I mean that's more of a miniatures. Keep in mind, yeah, Battletech is a minis game. Now there is a mech warrior RPG based yeah. on it, but it's mm-hmm. very focused on being a person in a robot suit yeah but having a world around them it's I, very I steeped like, in its own I, lore it, it it has enough lore that i mm-hmm. think you could play it as a role-playing game i think you like, could probably tweak it yeah because it's it's not just a stat system and heat sinks and whatnot and you know ammo counts there's there's the houses and there's been books written on the houses and i yeah. mean you 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 could use that but there is one there is one gaming system Oh, I see it. I'm cringing. That already has a Transformer (laughs) in it. I am, of course, referring to Jetfire, who is a Veritech. Which brings us to the Robotech role-playing game by Palladium, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) And if there could be applause, there probably would be. Have we so far mentioned Palladium in every episode? I think I yeah. I I've I don't it. think we did on the last one. Yeah, Ninjas and Super Spies. Oh, we did. Oh, that is. Yeah, I did. And we definitely did in Fifth Element. I would like to point out. That I am not a huge Palladium player. <laughs> I, I have a lot of their books, but the art because the art is oh. gorgeous. Their world building is gorgeous. I I love all the lore. I love all the thought that goes into them. The the, the mythos of the whole world. Yeah, just everything um, is, is amazing. However, I've played about two games for easily the thousand dollars I've spent on <laughs> Palladium books. So um, I'd like to pass these out. I have here the Robotech role playing game. 
the first series, the second series, yeah, that which is, is Jetfire. Southern Cross. That is this full on Jetfire. Is is this not? Is, I I think that's a transformer on the cover, right? That that <laughs> uh, other than it being now, black and white, I, I've I've marked it is. some oh, appropriate have, pages because Jetfire was red and white. And this yeah. is black and white with a skull and cross. Well, because uh, Skull Leader came first. If you're looking for transformable mecha, you have transformable mecha. You mm-hmm. have statted transformable mecha. Yep, the Veritech. Yeah, the Veritech is... And the Cyclones. Every jet. The Cyclone uh, and the varieties thereof are uh, every motorcycle. They have boat forms, a truck form, car forms. Here's the cyclone itself, which has always been my personal favorite. Oh, to play. absolutely, definitely. Um, if because if you're gonna play, play a cyclone. Yeah, motorcycle. Wait, let, uh, let me see that. Let me see that again. No, no, no. Just show me. Flip back to that page with the cycle on it. Sure. Because I want to. It looks very. That looks like the motorcycle in GI Joe. I know that yeah. we keep referencing okay. these visual images <laughs> that you can't see, but that's I all right. Look at it. Early. They are. I, I I think at this point Good everyone has heard of Google. Apart. And I and I got to tell you. While, God, I'm going to say his name wrong. You can correct me. Kevin Ciambietta? Thank you. Kevin Ciambietta is is the driving force, was the driving force. Behind Kevin, all those. Kevin is palladium. Yeah. I mean, there's a number of people attached to it as tertiaries, but Kevin is palladium. I, I would like to say that it has always been the art of Kevin Long that drove me to these to these books. When I first discovered them in middle school, way back in the day. Looking at the Robotech role-playing game, it has a very interesting concept, which I've yet to see replicated anywhere else, and it's the concept of mega damage. So let's say you're, uh, you're Spike in the Transformers universe, and you walk up to Optimus Prime with a 9mm, and you just you shoot at him. You, you burn mm-hmm. through your first mag. You reload a second mag because you haven't even hurt the robot. You keep shooting at it. That's the difference between a structural damage capacity, which is what the 9mm is, and a mega damage creature, which is what Optimus Prime is. And structural damage capacity, listeners, if you aren't aware, it's also basically synonymous with hit points. Yeah. You can unload on a super tough mega damage creature, like even something we have in the real world, like a tank. Mm Mm-hmm. You can take a baseball bat and beat on that literally all day, and you I will think, not damage that tank. I think the actual analogy they use, either in the Robotech books or maybe in the Rifts book, is attacking a tank with a toothpick. Yeah. So a Transformer is a mega damage creature, which we have stats for here. If you're going to get into the mythos of it, you're going to have to bring that in yourself. There is nothing mm-hmm. for the Matrix. There is nothing for anything like that. But there is a planet-sized killer if you want to do your, uh, yeah, if, if you want to move in that yes. direction, there is, uh, go the, on. There is the Zentradi moon, which is a, a That's giant, a horrible name. Size. I'm sorry. It has a real name, which I'm Unicron right sounds now. so much better. Well, that's why literally by Unicron. Voiced by Orson Welles. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has that. It has every type of transforming mecha in every form you can imagine. Does it have a dune buggy? It does. Does it have... With a railgun, I might add. Does it have a cassette recorder? No. No. Probably an eight-track player. Oh, it's not yeah. that old. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, Dune Buggies traditionally had eight-track players in them when they started coming out. That being said, I don't know who you could get to run this for you if you haven't played a Palladium game, and therein lies the flaw. I think Palladium game moves a bit like a virus you you have to be bitten by someone who knows how to play palladium before you can learn how to play palladium. <laughs> you know you, you know, can't just pick up the book we, we, and teach yourself so we had a long chat about this in our first episode actually did I we we've, we've already had have i already covered comments. this yeah oh uh, sorry okay. i i i have to say this is a fantastic game with gorgeous gorgeous art and it is worth owning even just for itself as as a book of art there is a whole suite of rules and occupational character classes that you can just cut away, which mm-hmm. honestly makes this a lot more playable. Basically, what you do is you take the stats for a robot and you assume that unless the other person is spending one of their three actions that they get each round and you'd roll three? for initiative three. There is a you have to work up to that in most there, games. There is a, a movement. Oh, no. Palladium, Palladium just starts you running with like three or four. There, there's there's oh, a man. movement. Wow. A possible melee. If you don't have the melee, you are allowed to take two ranged. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, that's, 
No, no, no. This okay. is that. This is the hack that makes this work. Oh, gotcha. I've actually like, thought I, about is, this a little bit because it that is. That sounds too sensible for Palladium. <laughs> I know that this is what I'm doing. So you roll for a niche, right? Mm-hmm. You go if you're high. Okay. Um, your your speed can play a factor if your GM DM feels like doing that. It is assumed that unless countermeasures or dodging, taking one of your actions, which can happen at the same time, even if you do not have initiative, mm-hmm. is used, that that shot hits. You then have a slugging match. For example, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee get in an arm wrestling competition. Optimus mm-hmm. Prime wins. Right. Not all is palladium... Is his arm bigger than Bumblebee? Close. I think so, yeah. Original or new Bumblebee? Original. Okay. Uh, I don't know these new ones you're talking yeah. about. Um, I mean, Beast Wars? That's new, right? <laughs> it is. Oh, God, we're old. Hey, Beast Wars is kind of cool. Don't, don't, don't hag on That's about as new Wars. Transformers as I know. It's, it's assumed it hits. That being said, it simply becomes a matter of deducting the MDC of that body part for which it is very easily laid out, and then you lose that body part. You're a robot. You're not going to be in pain. There's no uh, save versus horror factor. You're a robot. All of that stuff can be cut away. Mm-hmm. And if you play it just as a mecha with a few home tweaks, this actually becomes a very playable game. Hmm. There's, there's a, another thing you can check out that's very similar to that. It's a set of house rules called Microlite Platinum. You can Google it. It's, uh, if I remember, I will put a link down, but I think I might not legally be able we're to. We're allowed to put links in the link dump as long as I, I think something, uh, again, Kevin. But Microlite <laughs> Platinum is a homebrew hack of Palladium to make it more playable. Okay. It's something else. And I think it actually, I think it might do a lot of what you're doing. Like, yeah. I know it makes speed an initiative system. Uh, your stat bonuses are super simplified. Your skills are super simplified. It's, it's a pretty smooth system. Hmm. I can honestly see a way with doing away with the entire skill tree to play this game. You're a robot. Well, at that point, you might as well just pull out some rock'em, sock'em robots and punch each other. Oh, disagree, because they don't have the cool art by Kevin Long. Okay, just yeah. hang some pictures in front of them. But I'd, I'd say, to work it, just go off your mega damage. You have the missiles, you have the lasers, you have the particle guns. Use them. Find the mech that's closest to the character you want to play. And there is one for every type of mech, including boats, including helicopters, including cars and trucks that transforms. But stereo systems? I'm afraid stereo systems were lost. There are also no microscopes. So some of the the outlying ones, you might just have to fudge things a little. Th- this this would be my, my first choice for it. I think there's one two of very our good listeners is, has asked us to have a situation of dissent, and I believe that this is one of them. Ba-ba-ba-boom. Yeah. I think we should make fight, a fight, 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 oh, for fight, God's sakes. fight, fight, fight. Well, we are. Well, really I don't have three hours to, to the roll clock up a on here. <laughs> <laughs> and that right there, that right is there one makes of its biggest sins. Yeah. And I think that something like Palladium it could work, but you would spend hours crafting these characters. Yeah. To what end? I, I would like to say this. I have a little bit of fanboy for Palladium just because I grew up with them and they were magnificent really? books. I don't know if just it shows throughout these three episodes, <laughs> but, um, but I, I, I would like to say that as, as un, as un goddamn playable as they are, you really need to check them out. They, they, they are, are wonderful. They are fun to read. Yeah. They're full of great information. Kevin is an amazing world builder. Yeah. If he had taken this and just gone straight to writing fantasy or high science fiction, I I would be reading his stuff still. Did did he at all? Did he like did he write so. any books? I, th- I think or? this is his this kind of his life's work here, the wow. whole Palladium system. Palladium thing is, is totally. He's written Kevin's tons time. of books, but he I'm, actually not... has a few other games, but we're delving way too deep into Palladium. Yeah. I'm, I, I just wanted to mention that the, yeah. one of the reasons I bring it up is because I'm a fanboy and because just looking at these books grew my love of role playing games at a young age because I was amazed by what I found inside. So likewise, if, if you haven't, pick one up. They're, they're, they're really cheap in the game shop because nobody plays them. Well, but, Matthew's. Number one thing here is Robotech. For the sake of playability, and since this is going to be one of the contenders for a possible video, mm-hmm. and since I'm the one who's going to be invariably running them, yeah, I'm going to go with the Robotic Age. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going to disagree with you, because this is not 
you, you can't run this out of the box. I don't think the way watching a pull eight, watching Robotech run out of the box is going to be an entertaining no. experience. I, there no. would be so much that would have to be edited have of that I, video. I, I would have to agree. And I'd need, at, and I'd honestly, I'd need a few weeks to run through the rules, familiarize yeah. myself, and figure out how to tweak it to make it work. But I understand there are some Robotech movies. Oh yeah, there's a lot of anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot Something of anime, and there is the Shadow Chronicle, which is the Robotech movie. And I and I think all and of Robotech a is new on one coming out. I think all of Robotech's on Netflix right now. Yeah, I think all of it. Yeah, fantastic. Check it out. I'm not going to disagree with you, my friend NPC, because while I I think if you want transforming robots, you you would go with Robotech. I wouldn't want to be the guy who has to set that game up. I I want to bring this up as an honorable mention, which someone other than me should certainly make a rule set for. <laughs> but I'm 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 content to go with the Again, robotic. Microlite platinum. I yeah. think it might solve your needs if you really want to stick with a palladium core and have a book set or co- compatible with a game that is also playable. Yeah. The the problem I, I keep coming up with is that they just have such an inventive series of books <sighs> that they can fit a bunch of movies. <laughs> which is why I, I mention them often. I know. There's so many there's a palladium game for every game everything. On that note, we have pushed way past the clock at this point. Well, yeah, what we actually expected, what we out. thought we would do, we kind of went past, but yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm fine yeah. with that, too. We had but a, I, I'm also, great stories. I'm mm-hmm. also content with your game. Uh, the robot, the robotic age looks fun. I'd, I'd play the hell out of it. Well, part of what this podcast is is that people hear an interesting game that they may not have ever tried, that, and then they I can hope. go out I mean, and try it on their own. It's not like, this is what you must play for this movie. That is a good point of contention, and I'm glad you brought it up. Mm-hmm. We are not coming here to proselytize about a specific game. We are here to give you options. Yeah. Now, when we choose a game, it's because we're putting that in the rotation for being a possible mm-hmm. game that we're going to play for your entertainment. But for the most part, what we talk about are game options. These are yes. ways that we think you can play. We probably have not even barely touched the many other options oh, yeah. out there. No, because there's, there's many things that we don't know about. There's probably going to be... And if, we're fairly well informed. There's probably going to be a lot of listeners who be like, well, what about this system? What about that system? You could have done this. Well, how about, and and that's, if you have those, please leave them in the comments yes, below. Because I love no. giant freaking robots and I want to know more. Because so. we can't... We, we, we can't dedicate an hour and a half or however long this ends up being after editing to every single game that's yeah. out there. It's, it's, it's yeah, not impossible. Not. Unfortunately, guys. Sorry. And ladies. But if you do apologize. have a favorite, by all means, post it. I, I'd love to at least give it a glance over because yeah. giant robots. Big fan. You cannot go wrong with giant robots. No. In your life. For the rotation, we are putting in the robotic age as the candidate for our Transformers Agreed. game. Agreed. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and close this out here. This is, you've been listening to Half Movies Will Game. If you want to follow us online, you can check us out at our website, halfmoviesWillGame.com, or you can find us on Twitter, Movies, Games, Dice, or you can find us on any of the other mini social networks out there, Facebook, Google+, Instagram. We've got it all. All right. Well, thanks for listening. I was Matthew. And I am Dusty. And this is Nathaniel. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank you. Palladium. thanks for listening to another episode of our show we're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way if you like what you've heard or even if you didn't please leave us a review and let us know got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com Or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Have Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week. Hey, Matthew. Yes? Guess what we're doing next week. What are we doing next week, Dusty? We are doing the 1992 movie of Sneakers. <laughs> a technological heist movie. Okay. Uh, and so we're going to do that, and I really think everyone's going to love this one. Excellent. Excellent.